Continuing with section 9.1, we have example three, which says find the limit of this sequence. Um, so we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n squared plus five. So let's apply the rules that we did before. You could do L'Hopital's rule or you could do just the division rule. I like to do the division rule only because it comes in handy later um, when you have expressions like these because you can't really take the derivative of this and if you do it's going to require logs which makes it a little bit more confusing. So I like to just divide everybody by the greatest um, power of the denominator. So when I do that, I'm going to divide every term, every term, by um, n squared, which means my numerator is going to become 3. This denominator term is going to become 5. I mean 1, I'm sorry. And the last term is going to become 5 over n squared. So I just divided every single term by n squared. Okay. So you're always looking at the highest exponent in the denominator in order to determine what to divide by. Now when I take the limit, I get that this guy will go to 0, but I'll still end up with 3 over 1, which is 3. So I have found the limit of that sequence. So if the computer asks me if it converges or not, I did get a real number. So the sequence does converge, and it converges specifically to 3. Now example 4 says determine the convergence or divergence of the sequence um, and then find its limit if it converges. Okay, If it doesn't converge, it's because the limit doesn't exist, right? So you can't find it. Um, you can try, but you won't be able to find it. It does not exist. So A, limit as n over n plus 1. So I'm going to do the same technique as I did before, but this time I'm dividing by n. So I get 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, and the same thing happens. This guy goes to 0. So I end up with 1 over 1, which is 1. Now this is a real number, so I'm going to say it converges. And more, it converges to 1, right? Now part B has this problem here. Now you can still apply the technique up there. You can't exactly, I mean you could apply L'Hopital's rule. But when you take the derivative of an exponential function, it gets a little bit weird. Um, and I don't even know, ah uh, yes, we wouldn't be able to do that problem anyway because the derivative of an exponential function where the base is negative, I would have to use the ln of that base and there's no, um, ln of negative one doesn't exist. So therefore this would not be able to use L'Hopital's rule even if I wanted to, okay? So we have to be very careful with this. We really want to stick with the old technique, which is just dividing by the highest power of the denominator. So, and this is not a term, this is a factor. So I do not need to multi divide these guys by n squared as well. So this is gonna stay the same. And in my fraction, I'm gonna divide everybody by n squared and I get three, um, and then I get one and I get five over n squared. Now this guy goes to zero. Okay, there's a problem though. We have two different answers for this part. Okay, because if n is even, then this would be like 2, 4, 6, 8, and therefore this expression would be positive, and I would just get 3 as my limit. But if n is odd, then this will become a negative, and then I will end up with negative 3 as my answer. And we know what happens is if you're taking the limit and you're getting two different values, what that means is that the limit does not exist. Okay, And because the limit doesn't exist, we're going to say that this sequence diverges. Or at least the sequence that's defined by this nth term. right? So the next theorem is the squeeze theorem for sequences. It says if you have a sequence AN and a sequence BN and they both have the same limit and there exists an integer N such that another sequence CN is in between these two for all N greater than capital N. Okay, So basically 
if after so many terms, if this sequence, all of its terms are in between these two guys' subsequent terms. So let's say um, this doesn't is not true for maybe the first, second, third, and fourth terms. But for the fifth term and on, this sequence is values. Its sixth term is in between these two guys' six terms. Its seventh term is in between these two guys' seventh term. Its eighth term is between these guys' eighth term or equal to, right? Um, if that's true, then um, you can uh, use the squeeze theorem which says that this limit will also have the same this sequence will also have the same limit as the other two sequences okay so they may not always be in between the other two sequences but as long as this third sequence is in between the other two sequences or equal to after so many terms that the rest of them are in between then you can still apply that squeeze theorem now here we go, the absolute value theorem. For the sequence a n, if the limit of the absolute value of the nth term equals zero, then the limit of a n also equals zero. And then we have the definition of monotonic sequences. So a sequence a n is considered monotonic when its terms are non-decreasing. That means it could increase or it could be cons constant. So that's why you see um, the less than or equal to because that means this guy is bigger than that guy, meaning it's increasing, or they're equal, which means it's constant, okay? So non-decreasing means, yes, it's not decreasing, but it could be increasing or it could be constant, okay? Same thing goes for when something is non-increasing. That just means it could be decreasing or it could be constant, okay? Which is, again, why you see the um, inequalities with the equal sign underneath.